What's up guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. It is a Saturday night here. Wynn is across the street. We're making things up today, uh, walking across the street from the Wynn because the lovely, lovely resorts world behind us. Hopping into the games here, uh, second time checking out the brand new property. I'm out of breath, it's 110 outside and it's 10 o'clock. Who would have thought? But hopping to either the 2.5 or 5.10, if they run the 5.10, we might hop into it. But uh, yeah, action should be fun on a nice Saturday night. We'll see how it goes. Let's try to build off of yesterday's session. I'm out of breath. This is, this is absurd. Leave a like. This is a lot of effort walking in 110 degree heat, but here we are doing it. Lockbox merch on hand. Let's get it. Let's get into the hands. We're here at the 2-5 Resorts World and we're hopping into the action. Here with Ace Nine of Hearts in the low jack, I raise it up to $20. Only the small boy makes the call, so we're going heads up to a flop. Flop comes Queen, Jack, Nine, Two Hearts. We've got a monster draw here. He checks to me and on a board with so much equity, I just throw out a down bet of $15. Trying to get all of his holdings in here, he makes the call. The turn isn't a great looking one. It's the 10 of spades, brings in a back door flush draw. The board is paired. He checks and with a card that certainly hits him more than me, I'm gonna check this one back. When the river comes the five of spades, unfortunately we just brick pretty much everything. He checks to me and with ace high, sure, we're just gonna check this one back. I don't think bluffing here gets too many hands off. So I check, he shows ace four of diamonds and I show my ace high as well. Very anticlimactic way to start the session. After a huge flop, we just chop this pot up. Next, picking up pocket nines in the low jack once again. There's a plus one open to $25. I'm gonna flap and make the call. The player on my left calls as well, which also induces two more players in the cutoff and big blind. So we're going multi-way to a flop of ace, queen, queen, rainbow. Action is pretty weird as it checks around. When it checks to me, I have a pair, but multi-way feels like someone can have a queen and ace way too often, but surprisingly, action checks around. The turn is the three of diamonds, brings in the back door flush draw, and once again, action checks to me. Given all this passive action, now it seems more likely our hand might be ahead. So trying to protect my pair and against four of the players with a flusher out there, I throw out $50 and only one player, the player to my left, makes the call. So thinning out the field a little bit, let's go to a river, which is a deuce of hearts. Flush draw bricks, everything bricks, and I check now, not thinking we can get worse hands to make the call. So now he goes into the tank, thinks for a while and does this head shaking motion and then throws out a bet of $125. I'm not 100% sure what this means. This player looked like he wanted to give up and check down, but ultimately throws out a bet. And given how this hand is played, he's really not repping a whole lot. I think ace x holdings will bet the flop and obviously queen x might slow play, but anyways, um, whatever, screw it. He's not repping a whole lot, I make the call. And this player shows us a pretty good hand, pocket queens, unexpected quads, that is going to be the winner. Nice hand, sir. The next dicey spot with ace king off suit, we're under the gun and raise it up to $20. We get three players to make the call around the table. So once again, another multi-way flop brewing. The flop comes queen, four, five, two diamonds. Don't have a whole lot going for us besides two overs and some backdoor draws. So I check and nice to see everyone checks around. Looks like it's gonna be a friendly hand. When the turn comes the deuce of diamonds though, we went from having not a lot to a lot. Nut flush draw, gutter ball, two overs. I'm gonna throw out a bet here to $60 now and only the early position player makes the call. This player seems a little drunk and by a little, I mean a lot drunk. Anyways, we're gonna go to a river heads up which is another deuce. Brick city card and it seems fairly unlikely that this player may have a queen given the check on the flop. So gonna take another stab at this one, hoping to just win this with a bet. So I throw out $110. She makes the call fairly quickly, showing us king queen offsuit with the king of diamonds. We're never getting a fold out of that holding here as played. Unfortunate, but we ship the pot over her way. We're on the under the unstraddle to $10 and looking down at pocket kings. Always great cards to see when you straddle. There's an early position player who limps, a small blind who raises to $30 and music to our ears. We're definitely putting in a raise. I size to $100, action folds quickly back to the small blind player who defends and makes the call. So we're playing in position now, which comes ace, jack, three, two diamonds. Pretty gross every single time to see the ace out there when you have kings, but still need to bet when he checks to us. I'm gonna bet our range, so we size to $65. 
He folds quickly, luckily, so no sweat here, even with the ace in the flop, we take this one down. This next hand, also a straddled pot. We're in the hijack with ace, king, and raise it up to $40. Action onto the small blind who calls. Now the big blind player, three bets to 180. I haven't seen him play too many hands so far. We're in position. I think it's a good spot to four bet regardless, although this guy has been quiet. So we go for it. Ace king in a straddle pot, we size up to 450. Small blind gets out of the way and back onto this big blind player who thinks for quite some time. He has a really large stack and decides to rip it all in. Five bet rips it and he covers us. We have about $1,400 in our stack. And usually I think this is like an easy snap call if I had like a thousand in stack or something. But for about a thousand dollars more, this is actually a little bit of a decision to make. I'm pretty much hoping for a flip here if he has pocket queens and pocket jacks, or sometimes even a chop against ace king as well. But with five bet ranges being really condensed in these live small stakes games, I can definitely find a fold. But you know, you guys don't watch this channel for folds. So ultimately I talk myself into a call. Let's hope we're flipping then I'm win said flip. I call, let's go to a run out. We're sitting with ace, king, high, unimproved, and this player shows pocket queens. Nice hand, sir. Unfortunately, we're gonna ship our entire stack his way. Time to reload. With the reload coming in, we have pocket jacks and plus one, another straddled pot on the button this time. I raise it up to $40. There's a low jack who makes the call. Now the hijack, who I saw flat with the ace king twice now, he three bets to 80. Action folds to me, and this is just a really weird and unfortunate spot to be in seeing how passive he's been. When you see someone who limps or just calls with ace king, watching this player min three bet is really unfortunate, but he only has $700 behind. I'm out of position. I make the call for 40 more, assuming I'm just pretty much drawing to a jack. Low jack calls as well. Let's go to a flop. Flop comes king seven, three, two clubs. Action checks to the hijack player who bets out $225. Facing this action, I'm so, so out of here. Can't even talk myself into a call. I fold, low jack folds as well. In the next interesting spot with queen 10 offsuit on the button, there's a middle position raised to $20. Hijack makes the call. And with this holding, you know, we really can't claw out of the hole by folding here. So obviously we're in it as well. The big blind calls multi-way going to a flop of jack 10, seven rainbow. Surprisingly on this board, action checks to me. And although we do have some backdoor draws along with second pair, I'm gonna check this one multi-way, not thinking a 10X holding is gonna be good too often. So when I check the turn comes a queen, which is a Bink City card. We have two pair now. Middle position player throws out a delayed continuation bet of $65. The hijack folds and with two pair, I think this hand is definitely good enough for a raise. So I size to 200. The big one folds and now back to this middle position player. He thinks for a while before making the call with about $900 behind in the stack. So hoping to see a brick river and get some more of the money in. The river heads up comes the nine of diamonds. Pretty gross now, four liner on the board, any king or eight beats us for a straight, but this player checks. And now all things considered, I'm feeling pretty confident about two pair. But the issue is that if I bet, there's not a whole lot of hands that can call that beats us. Pretty much the only thing that we can bet for value against is like a hand like ace queen. Everything else like king queen crushes us. So ultimately I just check this one back. He announces a queen and I just show my two pair as we are good. Unfortunate river for us to see. Could have gotten more I think. Let's try to win two hands in a row in this session. We pick up queen jack offsuit on the button. There is an unregun limp. Folds to me, let's raise it up, I size to $25. Only this player who limped makes the call. For my notes, it says that he's super passive, so we're off to see a flop. The flop comes jack, six, six, two clubs. And remember when I said he was super passive? Well, on this flop, he leads out for $50. Really weird spots, don't know what to do because raising doesn't make sense and folding top pair definitely doesn't make sense. A Little bit suspicious of this bet, but I'm gonna make the call, not going anywhere yet. Let's see a turn. The turn is the five of diamonds, and once again, he throws out $85. Like I said, 
None of the other decisions make sense besides making the call here with top pair. Seems a little too nitty to fold just yet, although I'm not feeling too great about my hand anymore. I make the call. We're off to a river, which is a 10. Now, surprisingly, he just slows down and checks. I have no idea what's going on at this point, so I don't think there's any value in betting again, so I just check this one back to let's just see what's going on. This player shows us ace-10 offsuit, no club in hand. Okay, sure, you know, we'll take this one down. Looks like we probably made the maximum. Who knows? In this next spot, things get fun. We're in a $25 bomb pot nine ways. I'm in the cutoff and we're off to see a flop which comes 10, three, four, two diamonds. We see this flop, put our phone down and we see some action as the low jack throws out a bet of $40. Next to act in the hijack makes the call and now onto me, time to look at some cards. We peel and see two freaking tens. What? Not expecting to flop a monster like that and very surprised to see action with top set in this bomb pot. We've got a regroup. Never expected to flop the nuts, but let's take my time here. We count out how much is in the middle and we size up to a bet of $160. Action folds around to this hijack player to my right who surprisingly makes the call. He's playing about $1,000 deep. Come on, let's see a good turn here and see what happens. The turn comes the king of diamonds. Ugh, unfortunate card to see as the flush draw obviously gets there. He checks to me and I don't think I can slow down just yet at this point. I'm not sure what he could be holding since we did flop a set and we're ahead of some other two pair combos like three, four, I guess. But I throw out a bet of $180 hoping that he might have a high diamond in hand. Who knows? If I get raised, it would be a miserable spot, but he doesn't raise. He makes the call for 180. This is looking good. The river now comes the eight of spades. So pretty much a brick now. And I think for a third time, we can just bet fold in this spot. If we bet, see a raise, I think we're gonna have to fold even though it's as miserable as folding a set. But I size to $250. He folds rather quickly and always nice to scoop a bomb pot our way. Who would have thought we peel two tens, flop the nuts. The very next deal, we're back in the cutoff and we pick up pocket aces. There's an unling on straddle. Things are going well. There's a low jack limp, then a high jack raised to $45. Once again, this is just the action we want to see. I put in a three bet to $150. Action folds to the high jack player on my right who makes the call. Definitely a solid player here at this table. Let's see a flop. Flop comes ace three five rainbow. All things considered, this is a pretty good flop with a gutter and overpair. So I put in a C bet, this time sizing up to $200, and he makes the call rather quickly. Let's see what happens on the turn, which is the 10 of hearts. Pretty much the only hand that we're afraid of would be pocket tens, but shouldn't be too afraid of that when he checks to us for a second time. Now I look at his stack of about $1,000 total. I fire out a bet of $475, setting up a river shove he makes the call with about 600 behind, so plan is going pretty well right now. Let's see a river. The river is a four, so not really a great card, although we do improve to the second nuts. Not bad in that regard, but bad in the sense where we lose a lot of value against over pairs like jacks, queens, or kings. He checks for a third time, and I don't think ripping it all in here will accomplish us getting max value. Instead, I size pretty small and just bet $350. This player just doesn't look happy about it. Ultimately, he looks like he's in an agonizing spot and ends up just folding. Smelled like he had an overpair on a pretty bad run out. He later tells us that he had pocket queens and folded the river. So pretty unfortunate river, although we did improve, not the one that we needed to see to get the rest of his stack in. So we win two pretty large pots in a row, and for the third deal in a row, we look down at ace four of spades in the hijack. There's a middle position open to $15. I've been super active and showing down some premiums, so let's mix in a light three bet here in position. I size to 50. The button makes the call for $50. The big blind and middle position player call as well, so we're off to a flop multi-way once again. In the three bet pot, the flop comes seven, six, three rainbow. There's one spade out there. So we do flop a gutter ball and over and back to our spade draw. But when action checks to me, I think this board just favors our opponents way more than us. So I check this one and action checks around. 
The turn comes a board pairing three, but it's a spade. So improved to a combo draw now, the middle position player throws out a bet of $100. And here, definitely not folding, never gonna get away from our hand and draw. I make the call and everyone else folds. The river is now the ace of clubs, so we kinda get there. We do end up with top pair. He throws out a bet of $125. This is just going to be a very easy call, not folding ever. He shows us eight six of clubs, and always nice to win three big pots. And surprisingly, they're all back to back to back. So after this run, chipping up big time. An orbit or two goes by, not four hands in a row this time. We pick up aces once again, and we're in the cutoff. The player on my right opens it up to $35. It's his first hand at the table and started with a stack of around $1,100, it seems. So definitely gonna put in a three bet with aces. I size to $125. Action folds to him and he makes the call. So hoping to play a big one even though it's his first hand in. The flop comes Jack Jack 7 to Diamonds. He checks to me and on this paired board, it seems like I'm usually way ahead. I don't know how this player plays, but I don't think we can get three streets of value with aces. So not thinking he can call too much, I just check this one back and play it deceptively. The turn is a five and now he throws out a pretty big bet. He bets out $200 and um, this is definitely going well, part of the plan as a trap. So I make the call for 200, not gonna do anything else. The river is pretty cool. It's the ace of hearts. What a bink city card. And even better when we have top full house, he fires again for 350. Now I'm pretty much just praying he has a jack X holding and we sucked out a big time. Easy ship, so I put them all in. It's about an extra $550 total. And he looks at my all in, he shrugs and just calls it off. So nice to see that. I show the winner as expected. And he actually has ace queen in this spot. So pretty magical river to get paid here, hitting the case ace. Nice to run good this hand. In the last interesting spot with ace queen of diamonds in the cutoff, there's an on straddle and I raise it up to $40. Action folds to the small blind player who puts in a three bet to 155. Same player that we stacked off against ace king versus queens. He just hasn't played too many hands so far. Definitely seems pretty tight, but ace queen of diamonds, we're not folding this in position. I make the call. The flop comes ace 10 5 to spades. So top pair is pretty good for us. He continues with a bet of $100. We're not going anywhere. We're continuing with the call. Let's see a turn. The turn is the six of diamonds. He once again fires for 250. I'm not gonna fold here, but it is a little suspicious given the line he's taken. Definitely trying to rep ace X and he has definitely all the ace kings in range. Still though, just not gonna fold. I make the call for 250. The river is now the four of diamonds. And with this card, definitely not favoring the three better too much. He goes deep into the tank. And while he's thinking, I feel like I'm just obligated to make a call of any bet at this point, given the action, but he ends up checking back and now free reign to just go to showdown and realize our top pair good kicker. I check back pretty quickly. He unfortunately shows us ace king off suit. Out kicked here, sad way to lose a pretty big pot to end the session. Just a little bit of a change in scenery with this outro, mainly because I tried to record one, but the nightclub outside Resorts World was just insane, super loud, and the audio unfortunately was unusable. But we're in the game for a total of $3,800 in this 2-5, mainly after that first hand with Ace King that unfortunately didn't go our way, but caught out of the hole after those three sick hands in a row, back to back to back. I mean, to play three significant hands in the session, um, all pretty much in one go is always really cool and exciting to see out of the game for 4670 so found a way to crawl out of that hole into the black which is always helpful for that little punt rebuild challenge here um, but yeah right now I'm kind of just like editing a few videos right now and obviously playing some club GG on the side of my computer if you guys want to hop in and play on this club club gg click the link down in the description below or check out the pinned comments and uh, it's a good time so one two fifty cent a dollar 25 cent 50 cent a lot of different opportunities and options to play on and the club's growing and there's always a bunch of games running so if you want to check it out link down in the description below you'll talk to a bunch of admins they'll get you set up 
Super easy. Just download the Telegram group chat and also the Club GG app. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.